Hi everyone, happy Textile Tuesday. I'm Claire at the Allentown Art Museum, and this month we're looking at Japanese textiles from our current exhibition, Collecting Across Cultures, Japanese Textiles of the West. This exhibition looks at the American interest in Japanese art, collecting Japanese textiles, and also the historical and cultural context of what was happening in Japan in the late 1800s, early 1900s, that led to this popularity of collecting Japanese textiles abroad. And so this exhibition is on view through April 3rd, so it's in its final weeks. This is the sixth and final group of textiles that we're showing here. We've gone through six different rotations of textiles. Since textiles are light sensitive, light can cause damage, we've been changing it out for about two years now. So we're seeing these, this last final group of textiles here. And so I wanted to share some of the really exciting works that we have in this current rotation. This right here, this is a, a Buddhist vestment. So this is a form of religious clothing. And in J Japan, Buddhism has this tradition associated with the recycling and reusing of luxury textiles. Sometimes these came from noble donors who donated old clothing to monasteries where these were cut apart and restitched into new textiles for religious use. And also theatrical companies, sometimes old theater costumes would be donated to monasteries as well. And so in this vestment, you can see that it's made up of this grid of squares. So in the monasteries, part of this practice for making vestments was to cut up the cloth and restitch re it together in this kind of patchwork which symbolized the tattered clothing worn by the historical Buddha. And while being made, the, the maker would pray, pray and complete rituals, you know, making this, this process of stitching and making part of the, the spiritual practice around the vestment. And one thing you'll notice also about this particular textile, you, you can see that there are these embroidered flowers and we know that the, the maker of this vestment in the monastery was the one who embroidered them because you can see where they actually cross over the seams of the patchwork. So we know the embroidery was done after this vestment was assembled. And so you might wonder why is this Buddhist vestment here in Allentown, Pennsylvania at the Art Museum? And so this gets into some of the Japanese historical context. In the late 1800s, the Meiji government in Japan was very focused on modernizing, and in particular, they saw the way to modernization as westernizing and changing Japanese culture and tradition. And so among some of their policies for a lot of radical changes in Japanese society, were anti-Buddhist policies that cut off traditional income sources for Buddhist temples. And so you saw a lot of temples actually selling off these really fine textiles that were part of their holdings as a way to make up that, that income. And so we know that this textile was actually collected by Charles Sumner Graham. He was a wealthy Pennsylvanian. He inherited um, money, his family was an in industry, and so he was able to travel throughout Asia for four years collecting textiles. And we have over a hundred textiles from East and South Asia from his collection here today. So he was traveling from about 1896 to 1900 and fits into this context of Americans collecting Japanese textiles. And one question that came up when we were asking, when we asked you to submit your questions for today was about my favorite text, textile and a textile that I think more people should know about in our collection. And so we have another Buddhist textile that was an altar cloth or uchishiki that would be used in a temple. 
like this vestment it was made out of, a donated textile. It's unique because on the back side of the altar cloth, it actually has the names of people from the community who donated it to their local temple and a date. So we know that it's from the late 1700s and it has this very personal, um, personal community aspect to it. And so this textile has an exciting story and so it was actually part of an earlier rotation in this gallery. And then after it was on view, I was researching for this rotation and I discovered when I was flipping through a catalog that the Victoria and Albert Museum in London has a no theatrical costume made from the exact same textile as our altar cloth. And so I reached out to them and it's a really interesting example of how these secondhand textiles circulated in Japan, particularly in the religious context. So these were both, we believe our altar cloth was originally part of a group of matching theatrical costumes, like the one held at the Victoria and Albert in London. And so it's just very cool to have this real world example of this reuse of textiles. So that one's very exciting. I think that's I love the story. It's also a beautiful textile with this metallic brocade. And so I wanted to share one other textile in this gallery with you. Down at the end here, we have this kimono, which was also collected by Charles Sumner Graham. And this has a plum blossom motif on it. And in Japanese culture, plum blossoms are associated with perseverance, with health, and with strength. And they're also the first flower of spring. Plum blossoms in Japan bloom as early as February. They actually bloom even when there's snow and ice. So it's that symbolism of you know the, the flowering and the blooming even amid the frost that gives it that sense of perseverance and health and strength under duress. And so plum blossoms in Japan are actually celebrated with flower viewing festivals, much like the cherry blossom. The plum blossom viewing festival is actually an older tradition, even though the cherry blossom festival is better recognized today. And so one thing I really love about this particular textile is just the different textures in the embroidery the way that the artist created these, the sense of three dimensions with the bark and the trunk of the tree, the little lichens or growths. And so you just really have this skillful use of thread and stitch work to create this illusion of space. And so Americans like Charles Sumner Graham, there was a huge love of Japanese art, Japanese textiles in the late 1800s. And this was because the asymmetry that you see in Japanese art and design, the simplicity and graphic nature was seemed very new and modern and exciting because it was so different from Western art. And so it really became a key part of home decor at this time, as well as art and design. Really a lot of what we think of as modern art in the Western context is, you know, owes a lot to Japanese aesthetics and values of design. So I wanted to encourage you one more time, definitely come out and see this exhibition collecting across cultures before it closes on April 3rd. Seeing the works in person is just so wonderful to really get to get a close look at the, the stitch work. And I also wanted to let you know that next month for our Textile Tuesday, we'll be highlighting netsukes, which are Japanese ivory carved toggles used to hold a pouch or a pocket on a men's kimono. And they're very whimsical, they have lots of fun faces should be a good time and we'll be looking again for your questions before we share that video. So thanks so much for joining me and hope to see you at the museum soon.